Hey guys, I'm Aaron Johnson. And I'm Rachel, and we're Johnson Branch Farm. Today we're gonna kinda do an update video on some of the drywall work and some kind of the simple things that we've done um, here as of lately. We've been here for, uh, I think a year now. Um, so we've kind of, have lived here for a year and we decided there was a couple things that we wanted to do uh, a little bit different after being here for a while. So today we're gonna walk you through how we removed the drywall seams in our mobile home. We took down a cabinet in the kitchen and when we took down that cabinet, we saw that there was an open seam. So we thought this would be a good opportunity to, sh to walk you through the process of how we covered those up with drywall mud, painted over it, and how you can't really even notice they were ever there. Also, that being said, we had one seam split. I have no idea what happened or why it happened. I was literally laying in bed and heard it crack. So I got up and looked and the one seam had cracked. So I'm not sure if it, the house maybe had settled or honestly what happened. That was just not really that long ago. So it's been almost a year. Um, so I'm really not sure why that seam cracked, but again, we, we showed a video. Uh, we have a video clip of just kind of covering that up too and showing you how kind of re to repair it and just something that can happen and to keep in mind if you're wanting to remove the strips in your mobile home and cover those up As you can see, we already kind of did some of the drywall, but I wanted to go back and explain a few of the things that we used. So when we first bought this place, one of the things for me, I wanted to take all the strips off of the walls and finish all the drywall seams um, so that everything was finished. So I went ahead and bought the tools. I'm not a drywall guy. That's not what I do. Um, I do have an uncle and that's what he does. So I said, listen, can you just kind of show me the ropes? show me a couple seams and then I'll finish the rest of the house. So he came over for a day. Um, he helped me finish most of the seams and then I went back through and finished it all um, after he left. So this is just the recommendation is the stuff that he had me buy. Um, so I bought six inch knife and that was kind of just for the small holes, small stuff and for getting mud out of the pan, out of the bucket. Uh, there's a 12 and then a 10. And I kind of went back and forth between these two finishing the seams. You know, every seam was only, it was tiny. And with the drywall tape, you want to cover that up. So you start with the 10 and then finish with the 12. Because what you want is, you can't just pile all the mud up on your seam. You want it to spread evenly over it. So when you look down the wall, you don't see a bunch of humps and it kind of fades out. So that's the point of the two different knives to go start smaller and then work your way bigger. As you can see, there's only a two inch, even on here, there's only a two inch seam where I needed to cover up. But I went as far as the knife. And I went the full 12 inches with the mud, and that make, gives it a smoother finish look. So those are the three knives that I used, and then I bought a pan. That's what the mud goes in. All this came from Home Depot, that's what we have here in town. So those are the three knives that I bought. Again, this is just drywall tape, so this has to go over the seam. It makes everything adhere better. Um, it's sticky, so the one side sticks to the wall, so you don't have to hold it up. It actually sticks. You cut it with the knife. This is just a sanding block. When I did the whole house, I had the big, you can buy a big sander, a hand sander with a bunch of different sandpaper. But for this small application, I have just a small sanding block. It was fur drywall. Again, that was at Home Depot too. 
When we originally did the drywall, it started with almost like a hardener. It was, a, I think it was a 45 minute mud. So it sets up in 45 minutes. They have a 20, 45, and a 90. So depending on how much time you need, you can do it fast. Um, so you could do a first coat and it dry in 45 minutes, sand it, and then put your base coat. Because this takes, you know, 24 hours to really dry. Whereas the other stuff has a hardener in it, so it dries really fast. So you can get more done. For this application, I didn't use a hardener. I just bought this. This was like 10 bucks for a pre-mix, just pre-mix. You don't have to do anything to it. The other stuff, the 20 minute mud, 45 and 90 minute mud, you have to mix it in a five gallon bucket and mix the water and get the texture that you want. This literally already comes pre-mixed. I also bought this when I did the rest of the house. This comes in a five gallon bucket. So it comes in a really big bucket. I don't need that much mud for just these couple touch-ups that we're doing. So again, that's just a couple of things that I bought from Home Depot to patch seams. Today is, this is kind of day two of the project. I just sanded the whole wall down again. Use a sanding block. And just kind of, I sanded everything off and made it smooth. You can feel with your hand uh, if there's any humps or bumps or anything you want it to be smooth because when you paint it, you'll see every imperfection unless you use a really heavy nap roller. So what I'm doing is, I don't know if you can see in the video or not, but there's still, um, I tried to do a light coat yesterday so you can still see a little bit of the tape, just a little bit of the tape in some spots. So I'm gonna go back through and kind of cover up all those little spots and then tomorrow I'll sand it down and paint it. To repair the crack in the master bedroom, we used the same drywall process that we used in the kitchen. Say. We should scratch all this. Delete that. Let's start all over. <laughs>